Hey there, I'm team behavior expert Josh Shipp. Uh, let's talk about how to have a civil slash meaningful conversation with your teen about challenging topics. Now, when, you, when these techniques are used effectively, you'll have a more meaningful conversation and your kid will be more likely to open up to you about some of the you know, like difficult challenges that they're facing in their life. Rule number one, think before you speak. Before you say anything, think before you speak. Now think is a acronym widely used that may sound sort of elementary, but it's actually a great sort of a mental checklist when approaching someone about something challenging. So the T in think is this, is what I'm about to say true. So the T is true, is what I'm about to say true. Before I say something, I want to make sure that it's true. I don't want to exaggerate or I don't want to outright lie or manipulate the situation to try to make my point. H is what I'm about to say helpful. It may be true, but not necessarily helpful. You know, let's say, for example, your dog is hideously ugly, right? That might be true, but it's not necessarily helpful. It could damage the relationship. Who cares? Some dogs are ugly anyway. Like, get over it. You'll be fine. Uh, I is what I'm about to say inspiring. Your words, particularly as a parent, even though sometimes you feel like your teen doesn't care about you and like shut you out and this and that, your words have the power to build them up or to tear them down. A good parent seeks to inspire their kid. In is what I'm about to say necessary, all right? Uh, this is all about timing. You know, it's one thing to have a tough conversation with your teen at a time that is necessary, that's appropriate. It's another to try to have that tough conversation on the way to school when you know it's gonna be cut short and when maybe they're still half asleep anyway. So ask yourself, is it necessary to have this conversation right now, in this very moment, or can it wait till later today or later this week when we have a little bit more time to sort of unpack what it is that I want to talk about? K is what I'm about to say kind. There are two ways to say everything and only one of them is kind. Be kind. In doing this, you're modeling for your kid how you would want to be treated. Now, here are some other best practices on how to talk to your teen and get them to open up to you. Uh, first of all, don't lecture. Focus on asking questions. You know, mostly when you speak to your kid, you're going to want to focus on asking questions. It's way more important for your kid to talk than for you to talk. I mean, think about it. You know where you stand on certain issues. You know what's right and wrong. What you don't know is what they think and what they think is right or wrong with any particular situation. So ask them meaningful questions that'll get them to think and then simply listen. Uh, here's another important piece of advice. Judge the behavior, not the kid, right? Even if your kid does something wrong, uh, make sure to stay away from using accusatory words, right? Focus on the behavior, not the person. You know, you're free to attack the behavior, but not the person. Uh, let's say, for example, your kid, I don't know, like woke up a half hour late or something and missed the school bus. It is appropriate to say, hey, that probably wasn't a good idea, you know, sleeping in late and missing the bus. Uh, what's not okay to say is you're lazy, you're not going to amount to anything if you keep that up. Make sense? Now, even though you may feel like that, you may feel like screaming at him, calling him lazy bum, whatever. I get it. But it's important to focus on the behavior and not the kid. If you focus on attacking the behavior, you'll really get what you want and you'll help them to realize the problem. Uh, another thing, teach your kid how to think, not just what to think. Ask questions to help your kid follow the logic and see the consequences of their poor decisions. Using our previous example uh, about the kids sleeping and missing the bus. Uh, let's say that the conclusion is that you want your kid to arrive at, um, let's say, there's like your end goal, right? You want your kid to realize, you know what, it's really stupid to sleep in, and I'm going to miss the bus, and I'm going to be late for school, and that's going to affect my grades, and that's going to affect everything I care about. Then think about what questions you could ask them to get them 
to realize that, to get them to see it. So how would you say that? Perhaps you could uh, ask them something like this. Hey, uh, what happened this morning? You know, what, what went wrong? What were the consequences of you oversleeping? You know, what else could go, could go wrong if you accidentally or intentionally sleep in and are late for school? Here's a really important one. What is your strategy to make sure that doesn't happen again? And it can't just be, well, I'm going to try harder or, you know, it just won't. Uh, wishful thinking is not a strategy. You're going to need a strategy. So what's your strategy to make sure that doesn't happen again? And then also ask them, is there anything I can do to help you in this area? Now, you're not going to do it for them. You're not going to get them out of bed. You're not going to drag them out of bed for them. They need to be responsible. But can I brainstorm with you? Can I help you? Can we talk about this? You want me to check in with you? You want me to remind you? You know, what is it that I can do to help you out? Do you see what you're doing there? You're helping them think about the consequences of their actions simply by asking them questions, and you're teaching them how to get a different, uh, aka more optimal outcome. It's teaching your kids how to think, not just what to think. Here's what I know. As a parent, if you tell a kid what to do, they're going to rebel. That's just a flat out truth. But when you ask a kid a question, you are inviting and evoking critical thinking. And ultimately, as parents, that's what we want. A fully functioning teenage human being who, without us there, in our absence, can analyze a situation and know in that moment what the wise choice is. Focus on questions, get them to come to those conclusions so they will own those conclusions for life. Good luck to you.